What's up, y'all? Y'all know who it is. Y'all know what it is. Your boy, JP. And if you're going to be hooking up an aftermarket radio in your vehicle, then you are going to need a wire harness. But how do you know which one goes for your vehicle? How do you know which one's going to give you more features or less features? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. If this is your first time tuning in, please consider subscribing because these are the type of things that we do here. Car audio tutorials, radio removers, Q&As, all that good stuff. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I know there's websites out there that'll let you put your car in and they'll show you what all will fit your car, but I actually recommend you guys go to the manufacturer's websites and see what they have for you. That way you can get all the information straight from the source, no guesswork. But why are there so many options? What I need you guys to understand is that when you take your factory radio out, you're going to lose everything that was attached to that radio. Your door chimes, your OnStar, your steering wheel controls, if you have any type of rear seat entertainment, your backup camera, and depending on if depending on how much you actually want to retain or if you want to retain anything is going to determine which harness you need to buy if you don't care about retaining any of that stuff or maybe you have a base model and you don't have any of that stuff there's a very good chance that this will be the right harness for you this is the basic wire harness usually range between 14 and about 20 bucks depending on where you can get it from and this literally just converts the F, uh, the factory wire colors to the aftermarket wire colors now the reason i said that there's a good chance that you can get this one which is why you need to check your website is that sometimes this one will not go for your car regardless about if you don't care about obtaining some of that stuff. Sometimes you have to buy this one or this one. Reason being, sometimes your radio is turned on by data, which basically means if you was to buy this harness and plug it in and you was to wire everything up when you turn the car on, that radio will not turn on because although it's getting 12 volt constant and ground, it is not seeing ignition because the other side of that factory harness, there is no wire pinned where the ignition is supposed to be and that's what some of these modules do provide that 12 volt accessory so you can actually turn on the radio so if everything actually lines up and you don't mind doing the work you can still probably get this harness just know that you won't have an accessory that will be provided for you from the module all you gotta do is just use like a fuse tap or something as a matter of fact i just recently made a video about that that link will be in the description card in the corner as well and if you're bypassing your factory amp so you don't need any type of integration then by all means go ahead and get this harness just so you can get your power and now the easiest way to go ahead and retain most of your factory stuff that you have is just to buy one that has a module in it. This right here is a piece made by Access, which is another brand up under Metra. And it has a little black box. And of course you have your wire harness and stuff like that. Now this retains a lot of your features. It also retains your RAP, which stands for retained accessory power. And if you sit inside your car and you take your key out and your radio was still on and it doesn't cut off until you open up the door, that's the RAP. This one will retain that. Now it works perfectly with the ASWC1 if you want to retain your steering wheel controls because it is pre-wired for that. So even though you still have to do some wiring, when you take this box out of there and plug it into here, your steering wheel controls is ready to be programmed. Now the difference between these two and these two is the fact that these have your steering wheel controls automatically built inside. So if we go over here to the pack, you can see that it also has your door chime external to where you can plug it up. So if you don't care about your door chime, since you're going to lose them, just don't plug that part in. But with the pack piece, you can actually see that it is for amplified and non-amplified versions. So if you want to integrate your bows, this one will do that one as well, but it also has has a special dial on the side for your steering wheel controls. It's built in, there's no programming required. All you have to do is look for the radio code. So like Pioneer will be number seven, so then you will turn your dial to number seven. Uh, JVC will be number three, you'll turn your dial to number three. And then your radio is automatically programmed to your steering wheel controls. Now where we differ from this one, to this one is a ton of more features. Maestro RR won't just retain your factory stuff. Sometimes it'll actually give you features that you didn't even have. So let's just say you had a 2014 uh, Mustang, for example, and uh, all of your features as far as like your heated seats, your AC, is all built inside the radio. You have to use the Maestro RR and buy a radio that's iDataLink Maestro RR ready so you can retain those features and use those through the radio because you have no other way to 
control your AC because that screen is now gone. Once you get this, you'll be able to control your AC, your heated seats, look at your gauges and all that type of stuff. Now let's just say you have an older car that when you take the radio out, you get to put another radio in and you don't actually lose none of that stuff. If you get the Maestro RR and get the proper T harness, once it hooks up to like your OBD2, it reads the CAN data and you can get certain things like oil pressure, tire pressure, voltage of the car, when your check engine light comes on, you can press it and it'll actually shoot you whatever the check engine code is. Or a door open or a trunk open. You know, certain things that you didn't have from the factory or that you wouldn't have had you got one of these other harnesses. I, I didn't want to make this video too, too long because y'all know I like to make stuff short and sweet straight to the point. Even though this video may get a little long, I just want to give you guys some information because a lot of guys are doing your stuff yourselves. I appreciate all the comments, the fact that I'm helping out a lot of you people. So I just want to go ahead and let you guys know the difference between the basic harness and all of these other harnesses which ones will give you more features or less features or what you can do without and what you can get away with if you guys found any type of value in this video please hit that like button don't forget to subscribe share comment if you want to i don't have product links in the description because all this stuff is going to be vehicle specific but the patreon link will be in the description just in case you guys want to be a further supporter of the page man until next time this is your boy jp signing out